Smith. I'm here today representing Queen Anne's County. We have chosen a farm family to be recognized at the Queen Anne's County Fair for 2016. Uh, I am here with Downs Warren in Bridgetown and I would like to say congratulations Downs. Thank you. You had a board of your peers choose you to be recognized at the fair this year as the farm family and um, they were very happy to choose you and um, talked about how much you had uh, in, you know, your farming operation is such a good example for the other farmers in the county. You do a lot of conservation work. You have a very diverse farming operation. And I'd like to personally say congratulations to you. Well, thank you so much. Um, we, uh, we want to talk about some of the history that you have on the farm and your family. Your family's been farming for many, many years. Let's go back a few years and talk about uh, your father farmed with you uh, yep. for a long time. Are you originally from this area? Uh, from Delaware, Felton. Okay, so your father started farming in Felton, Delaware. Yep. How about previous to his generation? Um, <clears throat> we go back uh, 250 some years in Delaware. And wow. I raked it while over here as well. My grandmother was from over here. Okay, so your grandmother was from the Bridgetown area? She or? was a Downs. Okay. That's my name. Oh, okay, so you were named after your grandmother's yes. maiden name. Yep. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the operation that your father had over in Felton. How many farms did he have, or was it a traditional grain operation, or how did that evolve? Well, he, he had a lot of land, uh, and uh, we had some land over here as well, and then we bought some more farms mm -hmm. with my sisters and my family, and uh, um, he farmed where he lived, and he, um, which was uh, 200 and tillable. Yes. And then he rented, or not rented, but uh, well, like land, um, half and half with the guys as, as traditionally they, they did back then. Mm -hmm. So how did he get from your grandmother being here in Bridgetown over to Felton? How did that all start? He was actually born in Ingleside. Okay. And uh, at his grandmother's home. Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, over, over the farm there to Felton. Right. Okay. So what kind of farming operation did you and your father have uh, in Felton in here? Was it a traditional grain operation or? What did you have? Yeah, all soybeans and corn and, and wheat and a barley. And uh, we, uh, we kind of morphed into uh, irrigation and, and doing some mm -hmm. vegetables and, uh, and uh, things like that and trying different things. And my father was very, my parents were very supportive of, of me mm -hmm. or I wouldn't be here. Right. And my sister is very supportive of me as well mm -hmm. and brother-in-law. Yeah. And uh, so I've had a lot of people help me a lot. And that's kind of a tradition, you know, around the area and not only in Queen Anne's County, but a lot of farming operations with family operations. It seems like it doesn't take just one or two people. It takes the whole family to support the farming operation. Um, tell me a little bit about the vegetable operation. What types of vegetables do you grow or have you grown over the years? We grew a lot of uh, sweet corn with uh, friels for years and then Hanover a little bit and then mm -hmm. uh, some peas. Tried lima beans and string beans off and on, but... Uh, I haven't grown, I grew peas this past year, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm gonna grow some spinach this year. Right. Um, grow a lot of specialty uh, crops with uh, Gene Boyle, the Boyle Brothers, they've been very uh, generous to let me work with them and uh, great people. And uh, um, a lot of, like I said, a, lot, a whole lot of people have helped me. Uh, Luke McConnell, uh, right. my bank, been very cooperative with me and supportive, and a lot of people had a faith in me. So there's a lot of local businesses that you patronize as well with your diverse operation with the vegetables. You mentioned Hanover and Boyle Brothers that are both local businesses. Um, how about um, the spinach? Um, and I've ridden by your farm several times and in the winter time, you're harvesting spinach. Well, in the past I've, I've worked with uh, Starkey uh, Farms and uh, this year we're doing it. Uh, um, they, they actually rented it from me then. This mm -hmm. year uh, we're trying a partnership where uh, I can work the ground and then they put their expertise as planning and, and marketing and things like that. So. Right. So you're pretty much farming all year long. Well. Kind of. Eight months a year is pretty hectic sometimes. Yeah. A lot of irrigation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the irrigation. Um, some people have the assumption or, you know, think that you just turn it on and go. Tell us a little bit about the, how that works, you know, with irrigation and the hours of operation. Uh, it keeps me busy. I have uh, 14 systems, and uh, um, I had five running yesterday, and mm -hmm. I've got uh, three running now. Um, it's, uh, it's a challenge keeping them all running. There's a lot of mechanical issues that can occur, mm -hmm. and um, that's basically the good part of my day after I get crops planted. 
And at night too, don't you have to sometimes get up at night and check the pivots if you have them running at night? Lightning storms, you turn them off. And, uh, <laughs> if it rains, you turn them off and you know, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Um, other than yourself now, um, who helps you here on the farm? You have quite an operation for just one individual or do you have some other uh, people that assist you in your operation? I don't do any spraying anymore. I sub it out to the, uh, Dale Bishop mostly uh, or mm -hmm. some of the fertilizer companies. Uh, my good friend Rod Cawley runs my combine for me, and that's been a, a huge help. Great. Um, and then have some great neighbors around here, like particularly the Higgs brothers. They've been, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we all kind of help each other a little bit, but they, they've been very helpful to me. Right. Um, so how much land mm -hmm. are you tilling at this present time? Do you still have your farms in Delaware that you till? I farm uh, one farm in Delaware now, and then mm -hmm. the rest is over here. We till about uh, a little over 1,300 acres. Wow, that's a lot of acreage for just one individual. That's, it does keep you busy, it definitely. Um, tell me about your family. Um, <clears throat> do you have any children? I have a son. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in an accident when he was a little boy, so he's really not involved in the operation. Okay. And then I have a, a younger daughter who just graduated high school. She's uh, uh, enrolled to go to Del Valle University up in Dulestown, this Pennsylvania, this year, and she's Great. going to study ag. That's wonderful. So yep. she could come back potentially, and uh, when you're tired of it, and run the farm. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Possibly. <laughs> Well, she might meet some really nice young man up there in Pennsylvania. I mean, this Pennsylvania people sometimes are good people. Well, you tell me that. Well, you're Pennsylvania. That's right, exactly. Okay. So okay. she could uh, she could bring a friend back and help dad and turn the far farming operation over to dad or from dad uh, to the next generation. And I know that's something that you would probably really look forward to since that happened with you and your dad. Absolutely. You know, it just goes generationally, and we all hope that we can turn the farms over to our children and you know keep that tradition going. Um, what do you think has been some of the biggest challenges over the years for you um, farming with a family mm. operation? There's always issues with family operations. We all know that. Yes, there are. When, my, when it was just my, my father and my parents and I, uh, mm -hmm. that was easy. Yes. Uh, no contracts, no, uh, um, really no issues. Mm -hmm. um, if anything, my father gave me too much freedom. Um, I'd ask him a question and he would let me figure it out for myself and let me fail by myself. And, but he had faith in me. Mm -hmm. And I, I made many failures and expensive failures. And uh, that's why we're irrigated as much as we are now. Because yeah. that was my primary uh, problem. Yeah, but learning from those experiences that your father taught you has been positive, Absolutely. obviously. Yes. <laughs> so what do you think has been your biggest challenge? Farming. Biggest challenge of farming. Um, well, there's so many issues that are out of one's control. Mm -hmm. um, the grain prices are difficult to, to figure out sometimes. And right. Once you think you figured them out there, they go the other way. And uh, uh, the weather, of course, Yes. you can do everything right and get terrible weather. Even now with the irrigation, it's hard to combat 100 degree weather. Yes. Right. Tell us about that. Um, for those who don't know what it's like to have a corn crop that is beautiful, lush and green, and you've got water on it, there's still issues with the heat. What, is, what does the heat do to the corn crop? Well, uh, if, if, if a crop doesn't have water, I was told by the University of Delaware years ago that it will starve, essentially starve. Mm -hmm. So it's, it just uh, it uses so much water right now to, to try to uh, combat the, the heat. Right. Uh, even in a hot night, it's, it's hard for it to get any of spit. Right. And uh, so that's been a huge challenge. Yeah. This year has been extremely challenging as far as getting crops in. We had an extremely, extremely wet spring. Um, crops are probably what three weeks behind they normal some of them normal growth period um, and uh, once again weather is another big you know problem hopefully we'll have a very late frost this year because of soybeans getting in late and the corn being able to pollinate and, and this heat you know it's it's tough I've had early frost before and uh, I lost a lime bean crop one time and uh, no insurance and I lost uh, a bean crop early on uh, mm -hmm. They were late double crop beans, so right. yes, it can teach you a lot of hard lessons. Yes, yeah. that's right. Um, tell us about some of your early memories on the farm. What's what are some of the things that you remember that you probably your some of your fondest memories growing up on the farm? Well, it was an ideal kind of an ideal life. We were uh, sheltered and uh, um, looking looking back now, we were pampered mm -hmm. and. Uh, my father's and my parents' philosophy was that to let them be children, so we were. And I'll, even though I wanted to get on the old tractors, I wasn't allowed until I was older. <laughs> he said you'd have enough time on them when 
And he was right. <laughs> Do you still have the old tractors? No. Oh, they <laughs> You'd rather have the cabs and the air conditioning now. They're nice. <laughs> um, tell us something that the general public wouldn't know about you, Downs. We know that you're a hard worker. You know, we know that you're a good farmer. You're a good steward of the land. Tell us something about yourself that would kind of tilt people's heads and say, hmm, I didn't know that about Downs. What would be something that you could say about yourself? Well, thanks to my mother, I'm an avid reader. And mm -hmm. um, people probably wouldn't know that about me. And I, uh, I seldom out a man without a book. She was a school teacher and uh, her philosophy was you, uh, uh, you never went without a book. So when I go on a tractor trailer, I have a book in there when I wait in lines. Really? So Interesting. I'm a little weird that way, but, you know. That's not weird. That's uh, learning. That's still learning. I guess that you, that's the teacher in her that came through in you. Yep. That's wonderful. Um, so what would you hope to see with yourself in the farming operation in the next maybe five to ten years? What would you hope would happen with the farm here? Well, I don't know what my daughter's going to do. I'm no pressure. I want her to do whatever she wants to do. There are a lot of good young men out here that, uh, that uh, if I get to the point where I can't do it anymore, that uh, I would have faith in. Uh, uh, Mike Bostick is a very good friend of mine. He has a, mm -hmm. a wonderful son that's involved in it. And uh, uh, it's a, you have to de develop trust between someone if you have a relationship like that. Sure. And uh, that's hugely important with me. Yeah. And we have to look out for the younger generation because unfortunately we're all not getting younger. We're getting older day by day. That's right. And uh, our generation is getting <laughs> to be the predominant age group now that's farming. It seems like the older um, farmers, you know, are retiring and turning it over and in the 50s and 60s generation now is taking over that, that operation. So um, again, we'd like to tell you congratulations. Um, hopefully uh, you're honored and like I said being chosen by a board of your peers um, they felt like you were very worthy of this award and congratulations well thank you so much I am honored very good <laughs>